Hello friends, we are discussing plant hormones or phytohormones. We have already discussed about auxin plant hormone, gibberellin, cytokinin and abscisic acid plant hormone. You can refer my videos, the link is given in the description box. Today we are going to discuss about ethylene phytohormone or ethylene plant hormone. Under this, we will discuss about introduction of ethylene, its chemical nature and structure, then its production in plants, its physiological effects. We will also discuss about ethylene biosynthesis and ethylene signaling pathway. So stay tuned. Now let us start with introduction of ethylene. It is a fruit ripening hormone. It is only gaseous plant hormone. That is, it is only the plant hormone which is present in the gaseous form. Like abscisic acid, it is the only member of its class. Ethylene was recognized as a natural plant growth hormone recently by Pratt and Gosh in 1969. Though it was unknowingly used for ripening of fruits and to cause certain plants to bloom in the past. Example pineapple. It acts at trace levels that is it shows its effect or it is required only in small amount. Now the chemical nature and structure it is a small hydrocarbon colorless and flammable gas that is it easily catches fire. It has a sweet and musky odor in pure form. It is highly volatile substance. It diffuses from where it is produced to the other region very easily. It is simplest alkene and second simplest unsaturated hydrocarbon. Formula C2H4 or H2C double bond CH2. IUPAC name is ethene. Four atoms of hydrogen bonds are paired with two carbon atoms with a double bond. So this is its structure where four atoms of hydrogen are bond to two carbon atoms and these themselves are bond by double bond or there is double bond between these two carbon atoms. HCH forms an angle of 117.4 degree. So the angle between HCH is 117.4 degree. There is sp2 hybridization the bond is rigid about the two carbon atoms because they have double bond. Now the production. It is produced in all parts of higher plants including roots, stems, tubers, leaves, flowers, fruits and seeds. Its production is induced during germination, ripening of fruits, abscission of leaves and senescence of flowers. It is also produced by external aspects such as mechanical wounding, environmental stresses and certain chemicals. Now physiological effects of ethylene. It causes triple response that is inhibition of internodal elongation or longitudinal growth, stimulation of radial swelling of stems that is increase in stem thickness and horizontal growth of stem. It reduces sensitivity to gravity. This results in leaves and flowers drooping. It stimulates abscission of flowers, leaves, fruits and other parts of the plant. It breaks dormancy of seeds and storage organs. It induces post-harvest maturation. That is artificial ripening of banana, mango, tomatoes and citrus fruits. It induces flowering in pineapple and mango and also causes fading of flowers in some plants. It induces femaleness in some dioecious flowers. It induces formation of adventitious roots and root hairs. It stimulates flower and leaf senescence. Now let us discuss ethylene biosynthesis. So we know that ethylene is a major plant hormone. It influences diverse processes in plant such as growth, development and stress response. 
it has significant role in agriculture because it plays an important role in fruit ripening it is produced in all higher plants and active site for its biosynthesis is meristematic regions it is a gaseous hormone that we have discussed earlier so it moves by diffusion from its site of synthesis to the other sites so let us see this pathway l methionine is converted into s adenosyl l methionine in short sam in the presence of the enzyme sam synthetase and this enzyme uses atp s adenosyl l methionine is then converted into one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid or in short acc catalyzed by the enzyme acc synthase this one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid is then converted into ethylene in the presence of the enzyme acc oxidase or in short acu and it uses oxygen and it also give hcn plus co2 in this way ethylene is produced acc synthase also produces 5- methyl adenosine in this step this 5- methyl adenosine is then converted into l methionine by methionine or yang cycle so in this way methionine is replenished and the pathway goes on without taking methionine from outside now let us understand this ethylene biosynthesis step by step first step it is the conversion of l methionine that is met into s adenosyl l methionine in short sam this step is catalyzed by sam synthetase and this enzyme uses atp so this step where l methionine is converted into s adenosyl l methionine or sam in the presence of sam synthetase it is the first step now the second step sam is converted into one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid that is acc and this step is catalyzed by acc synthase it is the rate limiting step so conversion of sam or s adenosyl l methionine into one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid in the presence of acc synthase is the second step it is also the rate limiting step that is the rate of biosynthesis of ethylene is determined by this step or the rate of biosynthesis of ethylene depends upon this step now the third or the last step that is the conversion of acc to ethylene this step is catalyzed by acc oxidase or in short aco and this enzyme uses oxygen so this is the last or the third step where one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid or acc is converted into ethylene in the presence of the enzyme acc oxidase or in short aco and oxygen is used in this step also in the last step acc synthase produces 5 methyl adenosine or in short mta this is then converted into methionine by methionine or yang cycle and hence this cycle maintains methionine pool so in this second step acc synthase also produces 5 methyl adenosine from s adenosyl l methionine this 5 adenosine is then converted into l methionine by methionine or yang cycle in this way methionine pool is maintained and the pathway continues that is no methionine is required from outside now the inhibitors of this pathway amino ethoxy vinyl glycine and amino oxyacetic acid blocks the conversion of sam into acc they block the second step conversion of s adenosyl l methionine into one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid in short acc 
cobalt blocks the conversion of acc into ethylene so cobalt blocks this last step that is the conversion of one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic acid or in short acc into ethylene now let us see ethylene signaling pathway we know that ethylene is a gaseous hormone that is responsible for promoting germination of seeds fruit ripening opening of flowers abscission of leaves and stress responses to trigger ethylene responses or its physiological effects it needs to be perceived and transduced through a signal transduction pathway in this video we will discuss about the signaling pathway so first of all key components of ethylene signaling pathway first is ligand which is signaling molecule here it is ethylene second is transcription factor here it is ein3 ethylene insensitive protein 3 third is receptor which binds with ligand here it is etr1 ethylene response 1 it is dimeric transmembrane protein which function as histidine kinases extracellular domain contains a copper ion that binds to ethylene and an intracellular histidine kinase domain is present so now how ethylene signaling takes place there are two situations first when ethylene is absent second when ethylene is present let us see them one by one so first when ethylene is absent ctr1 constitutive triple response 1 associate with etr1 receptor towards its cytosolic domain which is histidine kinase then autophosphorylation of histidine kinase domain of receptor takes place this is followed by phosphorylation of ctr1 this ctr1 then phosphorylates ein2 protein phosphorylation of ein2 protein activates etp1 which is ubiquitin ligase then ETP1 associates with EIN2 and leads to its polyubiquitination that is tax it with polyubiquitin. This polyubiquitination is followed by proteasomal degradation of this EIN2 by 26S proteasome. Also in the nucleus EIN3 is degraded by F-box protein. EIN3 binds with F-box protein and it is followed by polyubiquitination of EIN3 by E2 which is ligase. This polyubiquitination is followed by 26S proteasomal degradation of EIN3. Hence EIN3 which is transcription factor does not bind with regulatory region of ethylene response gene Hence, no transcription takes place, therefore no ethylene responses or physiological effects of ethylene is seen in plants. Now let us understand this with the help of this diagram. This is in the absence of ethylene. ETR1 which is receptor and EIN2. These are present in the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum. Copper ion is present. CTR1 comes and binds with the cytosolic domain of this receptor which leads to autophosphorylation of histidine kinase of ETR1 which is followed by phosphorylation of CTR1 then this CTR1 phosphorylates EIN2 this phosphorylation of EIN2 activates ETP1 which is ligase ETP1 comes and binds with EIN2 and leads to polyubiquitination of EIN2. Polyubiquitination of EIN2 is followed by proteasomal degradation of EIN2 by 26S proteasome. In the nucleus, this EIN3, which is transcription factor, comes and binds with F-box protein, which consists of EBF, Qlene, and E2. 
this E2 is ligase. This E2 then tags EIN3 with polyubiquitin. That is leads to polyubiquitination of EIN3. This is followed by proteasomal degradation of EIN3 by 26S proteasome. So now this EIN3 transcription factor is degraded. Hence, it does not comes and binds with the regulatory region of ethylene response genes as a result of which no transcription takes place. Now the second situation when ethylene is present. Ethylene binds to the receptor ETR1. Binding of ethylene results in the conformational change in ETR1 that is ETR1 undergoes conformational changes. So now CTR1 is free. It does not binds with cytosolic domain of ETR1. Hence it interacts with EIN2 and cleaves C-terminal of EIN2. This C-terminal is then transported to the nucleus and binds with F-box protein. Hence, F-box protein is now occupied. So, EIN3 does not bind with F-box protein as a result of which no degradation of EIN3 takes place. Hence, this EIN3 binds to the regulatory region of ethylene response gene because it is transcription factor. Therefore, transcription is on. Hence, ethylene responses or effects are seen in plants. Now, let us understand this with the help of the diagram. This is ethylene receptor. In the presence of the ethylene plant hormone, it comes and binds with the receptor which leads to conformational change in the receptor. As a result of which the CTR1 does not bind with it and it causes the cleavage of C-terminal of EIN2. After the cleavage of this C-terminal, it is transferred to nucleus and comes and binds with the F-box protein. Now this F-box protein is occupied. Hence, EIN3, which is the transcription factor, does not binds with it. So it is free and it comes and binds with the regulatory region of ethylene response gene and results in transcription of the genes. This results in ethylene responses or physiological effects of ethylene in plants. So this is all for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.